Hello everybody, Mason here, how are you doing? Today it's time for another tag video, and I'm in over my head I'm not gonna lie. My lovely friend Lady Jane Boots invited me to a wonderful, sophisticated, literary dinner party, and now I'm required to put together one of my own. Fantastic. Now it occurs to me that because I don't appear on camera, he may have built up a false image of me. Don't be fooled by my warm, soothing voice. I'm not a dinner party kind of guy. Right now, I'm sat here on my office chair in my plain t-shirt and a comfy pair of shorts. I don't own the sort of clothes required for a dinner party. I don't even own a pair of jeans. I don't like them. I don't find them comfortable and I can never find a pair that fits me because I'm five foot five and the legs are always too long. I live in a small flat so I've got nowhere to host a party, I can't cook so I don't know what food to serve, I rarely drink wine so I would have no idea what drinks to serve, I'm just not suited to a dinner party environment. The term dinner party to me just feels so grown up, which probably proves that I'm not mature enough to host one. In fact, just last night, I saw on Facebook that one of my best friends from school is having a baby and I spent 20 minutes having an existential crisis. She's having a baby? A baby? She is with child? Wait, how can, she, how can she have a baby? We're only 17, we only just left school, there's no way she's possibly ready. Wait, no. No, I'm not 17 anymore, am I? Where did the last decade go? So whilst one of my oldest friends is preparing to build a family, my biggest worries are what's for tea tonight and can I pick the right music to go over my sarcastic YouTube video. Congratulations by the way Liz, I'm incredibly happy for you and weirdly a little bit proud which is strange because I have nothing to do with it. Anyway, let's get back on topic. It's time to dish out invites slash tag people. Now if I mention you, don't feel the obligation to do this tag. You can if you want, but I'm just trying to think of people that I would actually want to spend time with. To start with, I'd invite everyone from the Late Night 5 crew. I find them all hilarious, I'm actually becoming good friends with them, and they each bring something unique to the party. Sam is just the lovely, wholesome one who'd be responsible, making sure that we weren't getting into trouble. Lisa would be guaranteed to bring some tasty snacks. And she's probably into the similar music to me. Katie could just play drinking games with me because we all know that she's fun when she's drunk. Nolan could rip into me for what a terrible host I am, and Pei could convince me that none of this was real and all just taking place in my mind. Alicia Reads and Rambles is a musician, so after a few drinks I could probably have a jam with her and a bit of a sing-song. Jeremy Fee could do a poetry reading and I know I'd love that. Overly Average Ben is a beautiful train wreck of a human being and I know he'd keep me entertained. I could probably have a pretty decent conversation with Harriet from Harriet's Book Corner. Obviously Lady Jane Books would be there, making me feel like a commoner compared to her elegant sophistication, and Leslie from the Nerdy Narrative because she's great and if I didn't invite her she would kill me. That's the invites dealt with, so now they're out of the way, let's get to the questions. When you're at a dinner party, well I never am so that's not a great start. When you're at a dinner party, do you ask the guests what they're currently reading and have you ever received a great recommendation from these conversations? I guess in this hypothetical world where I'm grown up enough to actually attend something like a dinner party, it would just depend on the crowd. If I was with a bunch of people that I know for a fact don't read, then no, I wouldn't ask them. But if I knew one of them was a reader, then yeah, I'd probably strike up a conversation and I'd probably ask them. On the times where I meet up with my friend Dan for a drink, we always end up discussing what we're reading. He's kind of like me, he likes his crime novels, except his tastes are way more gory than mine are. Which authors would you invite? Oh bloody hell, we've got to invite authors as well. So not only have I got to go through the social awkwardness of having people watching me eat, we've now got to invite authors, people who I don't even know at all. This party is starting to sound like my idea of hell. I don't know. Sam, Katie and Nolan are all authors, that counts. And then I'd probably just get Leslie to bring a load of indie authors. Right, the next question should be easier, let's get to that. 
Okay, well, I won't answer the next question. Which characters would you invite? Alright, well, I've already said that I can't cook, so I wouldn't know what food to serve, so I better invite some characters that can actually rustle up some food, shouldn't I? Hannibal Lecter? I've heard he's a good chef. Joking aside, DCI Tom Douglas from the series with the same name loves his food and he actually likes wine so he could probably tell me what a decent bottle is and that way we kill two birds with one stone. Other than that, probably Mick Lovin from Superbad. Before you jump in the comments and say, this is a literary book tag, Superbad is a film, yes I know and I don't care. Would you like to invite a historical figure? Probably not. Maybe this is bad of me, but I just can't think of anyone from the past that I would want to hang out with. And I know a few of you might be like, but Mason, wouldn't you like to invite J.R.R. Tolkien? No, not really. I don't think he'd enjoy my company at all. What food would you serve? I'd go with pizza. I know it's not the most inventive option, but it's versatile. You can have any topping you want. You can have a vegetarian and a vegan option, so everybody's happy. It's great for sharing. It's good when it goes cold. It's good when you're drunk. And if you want drama at the party, you can always order a ham and pineapple version and watch the chaos unfold. What is your favorite scene centered around a meal? I really don't have any examples of this. I can't think of many books that I've read with iconic meals. I'd probably have to go with the dwarves invading Bilbo's home. It's both hilarious and in terms of the narrative, probably the most significant scene in the whole of the Lord of the Rings story. It really does set off the chain of events that lead to the War of the Ring. Dinner parties are not the only time when people share food. What are your favourite literary scenes where people get together over brunch, afternoon tea, picnics, cocktail parties, etc? In terms of literary examples, I'd probably go with the first chapter of Sweet Pea by CJ Skews, which I recently reviewed on the channel. For me, it perfectly encapsulates Rhiannon's attitude. You get to see what she's saying to her so-called friends, but you also get to see what she's thinking about them. Because Rhiannon is out with her friends for drinks and not having a good time, that first chapter really does read like the start of a contemporary romance novel, and then it just does a handbrake turn and skids into an entirely different direction. If you allow me to cheat a little bit and use a TV show, I love any time Bones uses food. It always leads to hilarious scenes. There's a Thanksgiving episode in which there's a scene where Bones, as a vegetarian, looks at the turkey and describes its life from the bone markers, which is brilliant. There's also an episode that begins with someone cutting into a giant record-breaking chocolate bar, and there's body parts inside of it. There are countless examples of this sort of thing, and it's brilliant every time. In my opinion, the producers of Bones just really understood how to do comedy. What is your favourite cringe-worthy meal scene? I don't know. I wish I had an answer for this question, but I, I just don't. I've sat for ages trying to come up with an answer, racking my brain for things that I've read and watched, and I just, I just don't know. To be fair, I'm not that much for cringe humour. When the pandemic ends, what will you serve at your first dinner party? Hmm. Now that I think about it, I would have to say that I would serve NOTHING. When the pandemic ends, I will carry on just as I am now, avoiding the general public as much as possible and only socialising on the internet. I know that I seem like a social person, and I am. I love talking to people, I just don't see the need for them to physically be there. I don't even know enough people to throw a dinner party. The people I socialise with are my partner, who I live with, and my best friend Dan, who would enjoy an actual dinner party about as much as I would. I want to backtrack slightly to correct myself. I said that I wasn't into cringe humour and I don't think that's necessarily true. After all, Sex Drive is still one of my favourite movies of all time and that is a massive cringe fest. I think it must just depend on the scene but either way I still can't think of one including food, unfortunately. My question for today is this, you have the choice between being banned from using utensils altogether and having to eat every meal using your hands, or using giant oversized cutlery that you can't put down until you've finished your meal. 
which do you choose? If you've enjoyed this video, the like and subscribe buttons are just sitting there waiting to be pressed. Now press them, or else. Or else what? You don't want to find out, mate. If you want to get in touch, say hi and have a chat, you know where the comment section is, and the link to my Twitter can be found in the description. Thanks ever so much for spending time with me today, guys. Until next time, take care. For now, I'm off, and you should have a good un. Hello, everybody. Mason here. Now, that dog just will not shut up.